Okay, so a t-test. Uh, what you're going to be using in a lab a lot of to test whether or not your experiment is statistically significant is a t-test. Some people will use chi-squared tests, or I haven't really taken statistics yet, but I do know how to do one of these. And what this is is a test for the significance of data. There are some limits to it that only two means can be compared, two averages can be compared at a time. So for sometimes, uh, for one of your experiments, you may end up doing two or three or four uh, <laughs> t-tests all at once for one experiment. Each treatment has at least two replicates that's kind of obvious because you have to have two means to compare so and then replicate uh, within a treatment do not have identical values because that can be problematic all this will really make a lot more sense once we actually get down to doing the math behind it so it does not require that the control and the experimental treatments have equal number of replicates replicates we're going to do an example where they don't they can or they don't really need to and a fun fact is invented by the Guinness to determine uh, which beer had the highest quality <laughs> Oh, thank you, Guinness Draft, for the giving us this. So, pooled variance is the first thing you kind of have to calculate before we can even start determining t-value. So I'm just going to draw this out real quick. Pooled variance is equal to, and this is a summation sign here, of x individual minus x average squared plus summation sign, again, all the y individuals minus the average, the mean of y squared. So we do that whole thing and then we divide it by the number of x treatments that we have, or number of x replicates, I'm sorry. And then we add it by the number of y minus 1. So that's pulled variance. x individual minus x average squared all those added up plus the summation of y individual minus y squared I drew those two y's differently minus y average squared and then we do number of x minus 1 plus number of y minus 1. This equation is for pooled variance and it's kind of confusing but we'll go further into explaining that. So once we calculate pooled variance then we can calculate t value. So t value is, and it's got to be an absolute value bars, so this is, it has to be positive, is the average, the mean of x minus your mean of y divided by the square root of pooled variance divided by the number of x plus x plus pooled variance divided by the number of y. And this has got to be an absolute value bar. So these bars right here, uh, that means that, because it took me a while to figure that out, that it has to be positive. You can't have a negative t value. This is the average of x minus the average of y divided by the square root of pooled variance divided by the number of x plus pooled variance divided by the number of y. So before you can even calculate your t value, you got to have these two numbers here, these two uh, values for pooled variance. Cool. So let's do an example. Let's do a practice problem here. And uh, if you look at here, I'm going to do it on the next page, but here's your replicate number, one, two, three, and four. So we have four replicates for, ew, we have four replicates for treatment Y, and we have three for treatment X, or treatment Y in our control group X. 16, 15, 18, the average is 16.3. 15, 13, 12, 12, and the average is 13.0. So, moving on, let's do a practice problem of what we just saw. Go back here and let's look at our data. And now we've got to enter this whole thing in. So I'm going to do pooled variance real quickly on this. It is 16 minus 16.3. 16 minus 16.3. You see where I'm getting that? And then we square it. Squared. Um, to do anything over there. Plus 15 minus 16.3. 15 minus 16.3 squared plus, you guessed it, 18 minus 16.3 squared. I don't know if you can hear birds outside, but I have my window open. I like it. So that's all of our X. That's all of our control.
I'm gonna switch colors for Y so we can kind of keep track of all this. So we do all that. And then we gotta add that whole thing up to the summation of Y which in this case is, we'll start off with treatment Y is 15 and then our average is 13. So we have over here, 15 minus 13 squared plus 13 and 13, which is gonna be zero, but I'm just gonna write it out because you need to know. You gotta, it's not always gonna be that luxurious. Squared plus, 12 minus 13. And then we gotta do that twice because there's two numbers here that are both exactly the same. 12 minus 13 squared plus 12, that's supposed to be a two, minus 12, 13 squared. Okay, so we do that whole thing and we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We do that whole thing. And now we gotta divide it by, divide it by the number of x minus one, which in this case is three, plus the number of y's, which is four, minus one. Okay, so we do that whole thing. And with that being said, our value for pooled variance if you put this all in your calculator, you will get 2.13. That is your value for pooled variance. So that's a lot of math, and you're gonna have to do this multiple times, and we're not even done with one t-test yet. Have fun with doing that. So we have a pooled variance of that. Ah, where do we go? There we go. So once we've calculated pool variance, we can now calculate what our t-value is. And changing colors to blue. So we have our, our x average, which is 16.3, minus our y average, which is 13.0, divided by, in this case, we're going to take the square root, that's supposed to be a square root sign, of 2.13, Three minus or divided by three plus two point one three divided by four. Point one three divided by four. And remember this is in absolute values for calculating our t. Okay, so this is the number of x, this is the number of y, this is our pooled variance here, and um, this is our x average, and this is our y average. Hopefully that's not too confusing for you guys. Uh, if we add all that up, our answer, I need to do this in white, our answer gives us a T value of 2.965. 2 that's what I got. 2.965 as our T value. And then another thing that you're gonna need to learn, and again, I'm just write this down here. See this guy, he will help you out way better than I can. Bozeman Biology. He does a really good job of explaining this thing right here, degrees of freedom. So our degrees of freedom in this case would be three minus one uh, plus four minus one. Some very, very complicated math that we're doing here. And this adds up to being five. So our degrees of freedom is five, our t-value is 2.96, and our pooled variance is 2.13. So what does all that mean? Well we do this, look at this thing right here, we have a t-distribution chart. And uh, ah, here's your degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom, this is your tail area probability. I don't know if you can see that, these numbers here. I'll delete that so we can get a better, a better view of it. So, and generally speaking, this is the cutoff area of 5%. Anything past this line that I'm fixing to draw here, anything past this 5% is, is not statistically significant is not significant if we do this. So in this we had, what do we have, a, a t value of, our degrees of freedom was five, I'll change the colors here, uh, red. Degrees of freedom was five and our t uh, value that we calculated was 2.965. 
So 2.9655, do, 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 do. It's anywhere between here. So if since it's in this area, we can say that it is, yes, our experiment was statistically, not sure if that's how you spell it. It is significant. It is significant data. Yay. So um, what does this really mean for us? Well, if you've ever seen like those five-hour energy commercials, let's say, hey, we did this and all these doctors said that you should take it. They didn't really say it was statistically significant data or not. They just said that they had people saying that it's good. You know, like Insanity, uh, P90X, all those weight loss programs of supplements and say, we took all these people and 30 of them out of, you know, say 75 lost weight. They didn't say it was statistically significant or not. So this really changes how you look at things. This changes everything. This is ex extremely important for anything. You can't make any claims out there if you do not have statistically significant data. And that's why this is taught such an early point in this course because it's really, 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 really important. Okay, so one tail versus a two tail t-test. And we didn't really talk so much about that, but you know how we said that generally the whole 5% thing is the cutoff, just it's an arbitrary point that we just say if it's 5%, we cut it off. Well, that's if it's a one tail. So this right here, this is a one tail t-test. If we wanted to make it a two tail, it would be like this, and it would have two little shades here. I'm just explaining to you the significance of having a, a one. So this is a one tail. If we wanted to make it a two-tailed, two-tailed, it would have here. But the thing is, both of these values would have to be within 2.5%. A bit of a difference there in terms of statistically significant data. So how do you know? Well, hey, how do I know if I'm supposed to use a one-tail or if I'm supposed to use a two-tail? That comes from your hypothesis. If a hypothesis specifies how the experimental treatment will differ from the control, then we'll use a one-tailed t-test. The main is that magic word there, how. If it says how the experimental different treatment will differ from the control, we use a one-tailed. If, if the hypothesis only specifies that the two means will differ, that there, there will be a difference between the two means, then we should only have to do a two-tailed t-test. Which, in case you didn't, in case you guys forgot, that's from where we have our bell-shaped curve. Not, not a bell curve, but for determining that, and that's the word that we have the two little areas there, two-tailed, and we have 2.5% for a two-tailed t-test. So lastly, I just want to talk about, and we've discussed a lot of this in the lab manual, is that science proves nothing. The very, very most you will ever, ever get is rejecting the null. You can never say that we've proved something. You reject the null. That's the most that you can say is that, hey, this could not have just spontaneously happened.